Um, Jan Johnson says, question. What do you think about the term intimate friend? Intimate friend. Um, I, to me, intimate friend, I don't know if we're talking about emotional intimacy or are we talking about penis and the vagina intimacy, <laughs> um, sexual intimacy. Um, here's the thing. I have very, I have several ma male and female friends where I can be intimate with them, meaning I can be vulnerable, authentic, and transparent with them. Vulnerable, authentic, and transparent. Ideally, your partner should be someone you can be vulnerable. You can be authentic. You can be transparent. And how it, does that happen? It starts by being radically honest with one another and building intimacy. Because here's the dis Here's the dysfunctionality in most relationships today. Men and women don't feel emotionally safe with one another. They don't feel emotionally safe with one another because they're hyper -folk. You know what's interesting? I noticed, by the way, I'm going to be candid with you all. I'm finding myself being less interested in talking to people, not my clients. I love talking to my clients, but to human beings in general. Because most human beings give me their resume. They give me their resume. They give me the resume of what they've done in their life. They give me their resume of what they did that day. They give me the resume of all the famous people they know in their life. They give me the resume of their, their financial status or their, their superficial aspects of their life or the clothes they bought. So it's all this resume in my terms. And to me, that doesn't stimulate my heart. That doesn't stimulate me as a person. What stimulates me as a person is talking to them at a deeper level. If you haven't seen my meme before, I'm going to show this to you really quickly, everyone. This is one I've shared. I'm starting to share this on a lot more videos, but it's one of my favorite memes, quotes. It says, I hate small talk. I want to talk about atoms, death, aliens, sex, magic, intellect, the meaning of life, faraway galaxies, music that makes you feel different, memories, the lies you've told, your flaws, your favorite sense, your childhood, what keeps you up at night, your insecurity and fears. I like people with depth who speak with emotion from a twisted mind. I don't want to know what's up. Oh, I love this message because, folks, I got to tell you something as a man out there dating, who's a sapiosexual, which means I'm attracted to intellect and depth. Most women, no disrespect to you, but this is true of men and women alike. You, most human beings are so caught up in the ego superficial way of living life. And it's about giving their resume instead of being intimate with one another intimacy into me. You see, this is why I continually recommend the book, Emotional Intimacy. It's the reason why I'm recommending this book lately. It's a tough read, but it's called Talking to Strangers, How to Get to Know the People You Don't Know. Why this is so critically important, why I'm sharing this with you folks, is because intimacy builds emotional safety. Intimacy builds emotional safety. And what most relationships lack is not chemistry and all this stuff. What they really lack is emotional safety. And the reason why men don't commit when their life is in chaos, they won't commit because they're not feeling safe in their world. You know, if they have a contentious relationship with X, they're not feeling emotionally safe in the world. If they're hyper-focused on their family and friends, they, they, they're almost codependent on their family and friends. And lastly, if they're so, if they don't invest in the same effort that you do is because they don't feel emotionally safe. And it's because we have a distressing lack of intimacy because most people are dating hyper-focused on chemistry and romance and not really getting to know another human being. That's why I continually recommend these books over and over and over again, because I'm trying to encourage you all to learn how to ask the right questions in the early stage of dating so you don't invest in the wrong guy. By the way, there's a link below to a free discovery call with me. My whole coaching program teaches you how to ask better questions in the early stage of dating so you can determine, is this person right for me? Is this person right for me or at least worth investing in? Because we don't have time to fuck around. In fact, do you know Look at the number one emotional health issue facing most human beings is I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable and I'm not likable. I'm going to repeat that. That's the number one emotional health issue. And nothing triggers that like dating. 
like dating. You know, I was recently speaking to someone um, whose daughter is a 17 year old daughter is going through hell right now because her boyfriend broke up with her and she literally had to be sent off to a psychiatric ward. In fact, this isn't the first time I've heard this. I've heard this two or three times now in just recent months. Think about that. Young love has, has caught and then the breakup has caused so much emotional distress that several people have had to go to psychiatric care or psychological, I don't know if it's psychiatric or whatnot, I'm just speculating here, but have had to go to get mental health care over a breakup. You know, we humans aren't really all that great at navigating our emotions when we put when we give our power away to another human being this is why i continually recommend book after book after book especially this book the hoffman process the hoffman process this is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that cause those negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our lives because ultimately folks emotional safety is what's going to bring two people together and the original question about intimate friend, listen, if you're talking about a friend with benefits, that's not where I was going because I'm here to encourage deeper intimacy because truly your partner, just like my mom and dad of 66 years, actually they knew each other 72 years before my mother passed away at 88. You know what? Everyone I know who's been married that long says the same thing. I married my best friend. And what that means is they felt emotionally safe to speak their truth to their partner. Because if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And that's my invitation for everyone. Ah, because that's what love would do and that's how love would respond. So thank you so much for that question, allowing me to share that with you, Jan. I really appreciate it. All right, we're gonna take a few more questions. Bump, bump, bump. 